Hello and welcome to this complex uh, PCI webcast series. This particular webcast will focus on how to perform the DK crash or double kiss crash bifurcation standing. It will be a case illustration demonstrating how the technique is performed. This is the case. This is a patient who has an LAD diagonal bifurcation. This is a Medina 111 bifurcation lesion because there is disease both proximal to the side branch as well as distal to the side branch in the main vessel, which is the LAD in this particular case, and also there is disease in the ostium of the side branch. How should these uh, cases be approached? A general approach in every bifurcation is to begin by asking whether the side branch is big enough and needs to be preserved. In this particular case, the side branch is very large, supplying a large uh, anterior lateral territory. Therefore, it is clearly an important side branch to preserve. The second question is, how likely is this for the side branch to occlude if a PCI of the main vessel is performed? And the answer in this particular case is that it's pretty high because there is disease both in the main vessel as well as the ostium of the side branch. If there was not a significant disease there, then a provisional side branch standing would be okay. However, when you have an important side branch that needs to be preserved and a high risk for occlusion, then a planned two-stand strategy may have the advantage by ensuring main the patency of the side branch. And a simplified way to plan such a two-stand strategy is based on the angulation of the side branch. If it is close to 90 degrees, then this stent is usually performed. Otherwise, a crash or decay crash or the culot technique are performed. And the decay crash is actually the preferred mode of crash technique uh, that um, is currently being utilized. So how is this decay crash performed? The first step, as with any bifurcation, is to advance guide wires in both the side branches. So we have a guide wire in the diagonal, as well as the guide wire in the LAD. And then both branches are predilated to ensure that good stent expansion will occur after the stents are implanted. So balloon was done on the diagonal and balloon angioplasty was done in the main vessel with the 2.0 millimeter balloon. And this is the angiographic appearance afterwards, demonstrating some dissection in the main vessel as well as the side branch ostium, which in turn may increase the risk of a side branch occlusion when a stent is placed in the main vessel. So in this particular case, the first step for the DK crash is to place a stent into the side branch with a few millimeters, two to three millimeters protruding into the main vessel. As you know, we also have a balloon in the main vessel. In this particular case, it is a 2.5 millimeter balloon. The balloon is deployed in the side branch at 12 atmospheres. And then after removal of the uh, balloon, um, of the stand balloon, then the side branch stand is crushed. Actually, we did use a 275 by 20 millimeters balloon in the main vessel to crush the side branch stand. This is the angiographic appearance after crash, demonstrating good patency of the side branch. They're still flowing the LED. And this is optical coherence tomography, which is interesting, illustrating the dissection in the main vessel, as well as um, there's some thrombus formation there. And as we move close to the side branch, we see a good result. There's a good osteal um, uh, main, maintain, maintenance of the osteal patency, and the proximal vessel is um, uh, mildly diseased. So these are some still frames demonstrating the distal dissection the good expansion of the ostium of the side branch and um, some persistent dissection proximal to the origin of the diagonal. The next step in DK crash is to advance a guide wire into the side branch. Then the jailed guide wire is removed and um, the first uh, kiss is performed. And we typically like to perform every kiss balloon angioplasty as a two-step procedure, which means we first inflate the balloon into the side branch at high pressure, 
close to 20 atmospheres, and then we inflate simultaneously both the side branch balloon as well as the main vessel balloon. That's the first part of the DK crash, that's the first kiss. And the next step is to position the main vessel stand, which is uh, deployed into the main vessel. This is a 275 by 28 millimeter drag eluting stand, which we size as for any PCI based on the size of the distal vessel. As you can see, there is more, it's larger proximal vessel which can then be optimized with the POT technique or proximal optimization technique, but we always want to size on distal vessel so as to minimize the risk for distal dissection during deployment of the stand. The stand is deployed and OCD done afterwards demonstrates very nicely the jailed side branch guide wire under the nicely expanded and well opposed stand. What can sometimes be challenging after deployment of the main vessel stand is rewiring of the side branch and we actually did have some difficulty advancing a wire into the diagonal after LAD stand deployment. To overcome this limitation we used a twin pass, a dual lumen microcatheter. These microcatheters have an exit port proximal to the proximal marker that goes to the uh, over the wire lumen all the way back and by doing that, there was easy to advance a workhorse guide wire into the diagonal branch. We removed the jail guide wire, which came back easily. And now we have um, the two wires in place and we're ready to perform the second KISS procedure. One of the limitations of the DK crash is that it requires the second rewiring. So we have to rewire the side branch twice, the first time after the deployment of the, of the side branch stand and the second time after deployment of the main vessel stand. So in this particular case, we are ready to perform the second kiss. We had this more proximal diagonal branch that had some osteal disease and we advanced the wire there just to protect it. But we are ready here to uh, perform the second kiss into the main vessel and the side branch. To do this, we first did it as a second, as a two-step procedure like the first kiss we inflated at high pressure a balloon into the diagonal branch and then performed kissing balloon inflation at 12 atmospheres that was at 20 and this is at 12 atmospheres into both the side branch and the main vessel and after this was performed a very important step is the so-called pot or proximal optimization technique in which a larger balloon in this particular case a 3 balloon was inflated proximal to the bifurcation to ensure that the proximal part of the main vessel stand is well expanded and well opposed to the main vessel. And this is the angiographic appearance after the second kiss, which looks very good in both um, the RAO as well as the aliocranial view. There's an excellent reconstitution of the bifurcation. This was confirmed by optical coherence tomography imaging. There was good stand expansion distal to the bifurcation. The carina was excellent with very good um, opening into the side branch and then the more proximal part of the main vessel um, was standed nicely with good stand expansion and stand strata position and this shows it very diagrammatically distally there is a nice stand expansion and a position the same in the proximal vessel in blue and we do have um, um, an excellent carina very large carina <coughs> of the LED and the side branch so in summary the double kiss crash or the DK crash technique is the preferred crash technique currently for performing bifurcation stenting of lesions with uh, less than 70 degree angles. It does require rewiring the side branch twice. The first time after the um, side branch stand is crushed and the second time after the main vessel stand is deployed and also required to Kiss, hence the name double kiss. And like every other bifurcation standing, it's important to do the pot technique or the proximal optimization technique in the proximal part of the stand. Thank you.